Did you know that you can easily sample Iberia's flagship A350 between Madrid and London? Well, here's a comprehensive and, dare I say, brutally honest review of the flight sat down the back in economy. It was definitely a memorable flight, however, sadly not necessarily memorable for all the right reasons. I think I have a few words to say to Iberia, you know. Hmm, it's a tough one. Normally I come out thinking like, oh my god, that was amazing, but... I'm not getting that feeling. We're taking a train to the terminal. It's arriving in one minute. Oh wait, here it is. Hang on, it's coming, it's coming. So, welcome to uh, Madrid Barajas, Terminal 4, uh, flying Iberia. I said, on the 350, over to London. Finding departures, good, everything there. Then we'll introduce this all properly, shall we? Okay, so there is a satellite terminal at Terminal 4, Terminal 4S. Our flight is actually leaving from that, so we'll be taking this little uh, metro service here. Well, that was nicely timed, wasn't it? We're going to be taking that little metro service there, and that's basically going to take us to Terminal 4, uh, 4S. I don't know if that means south or satellite, I'm not really sure. Uh, MSA 350900. Result. If you haven't watched already, you've probably seen that I tried to come over here on the A380. However, we sadly suffered an equipment change. Uh, I later found out that apparently the A380 needs a minimum of uh, 18 crew to operate with an optimum of 22 and there were only 13 uh, on the flight at that point. So they had to swap it to a smaller, smaller aircraft. But the 350 is still going ahead, so it's not all bad. Duty free, buying stuff you really don't need. Ooh, perfume. Let's have a chat about the, uh, the airport itself because we haven't done that yet. It's actually pretty nice. The architecture is brilliant. I must say, I do absolutely love it. I love the kind of wooden effects that they've given it, all the color schemes, they're all really nice. Loads of bits of the airport that are just completely silent. However, uh, the departure hall, was very very busy security was very very busy considering how busy it was i did manage to get through in probably about five ten minutes so in terms of timing pretty good but it was very hectic like i felt like i was really rushing unlike terminal five where i was you know i could take my time and do whatever i needed to do great for spotting as well and yeah it's, it's absolutely awesome the aircraft around it uh, we've had a 380 takeoff we've got this ibero jet Wow, I mean, half loads of airlines I've never even heard of before. Yeah, it's a pretty good airport. I've heard for connections, it's awful though. But obviously I'm not one to say because I'm not doing a connection. MXV is at the gate. We're going to start heading to the gate soon. Boarding commences in about half an hour, I think. So far, the Iberia experience has been okay and I haven't even had anything to do with Iberia yet. Their app is good. Yeah, that's pretty much it. £9 for the seat selection as well. So... Happy days. One observation, they have nowhere near enough departure boards. I'm having to walk five minutes to find out what gate my flight is at, which shouldn't really have to happen. At the gate of Sierra 26 today. Let's find it. So we've got Sierra 10 and 9 over there. No idea. Uh, 12, 11, 12. Yeah, I think it's all the way down. Requested priority boarding to get photos and video, of course. And they've let me. Good man. Thumbs up for that. Boarding was chaotic. Iberia board passengers starting from the rear working forwards, however poor signage at the gate meant there were loads of different queues and literally no one had any idea where they should be. Some passengers didn't have documents either which meant they had to go to a separate desk which was way too small to accommodate the amount of people. Anyway, we were greeted by Mike X-Ray Victor, a beautiful A350-900. Iberia have fitted their A350s with 348 seats. The premium cabins are small with 31 in business and 24 in premium economy, however there's a large 293 seat economy cabin as you can see here. Iberia have used the CL3710 seat which is an awesome seat, we'll explore it in more detail anyway when we're in the air. Our aircraft had arrived late from its previous flight to Bogota so we were stuck on the gate for about 45 minutes. 
when passengers had boarded and we were waiting for our departure slot, the cabin crew just seemed to disappear. I had literally no idea where they'd gone. I began to feel thirsty and contemplated asking for a drink. I didn't in the end, however the occasional walkthrough of the cabin would have been appreciated. There's a minimum crew requirement. What's the minimum crew? Oh, one I suppose. <laughs> I forgot how quiet the Trentex WBs are and how much they really pack a punch. They spool up much faster than other engines. During the climb out there was no after takeoff announcement, however a drink service did promptly begin. The options were mango juice or dihydrogen monoxide or if you want to be technical, water. The water was, well, just water, but it was nicely cooled and came from a bottle. The mango juice really hit the spot, it was lovely. It was also nice to see Iberia using some Greta Thunberg approved cups made out of recycled paper. There you can see I'm enjoying it there. The CL3710 seat is absolutely brilliant with a 10 inch full HD adjustable display in front of you with USB charging underneath. There's also 110 volt AC power available. Beneath which is a two piece tray table which I absolutely love. I love these type of tray tables and almost wanted to cry when Emirates reverted to the single piece table a couple of years ago. Moving further down in the seat back pocket is your safety card and sick bag. In response to Covid, like British Airways, they have removed the in-flight magazine. Iberia have left you with ample legroom with their 31 inch seat pitch and the seats are also 17.1 inches wide. They're very well padded which generally makes them a lovely place to be. I loved the four way hammock style adjustable headrest. It's a great seat for a long haul flight. Throughout the flight, the in-flight entertainment was available to use, however headphones were not provided. A standard headphone jack was located underneath the screen so your own headphones could be used, assuming that they have a 3.5mm headphone jack. Iberia's IFE is powered by the Panasonic IFE EX3 system, which has proven a popular choice among many airlines, including British Airways' latest in-flight entertainment systems. The system is capable of holding a huge one terabyte content library including films, shows, audio and video games. Iberia's selection was relatively extensive and the screen was full HD and very responsive. Duty free could also be done through the system and there were also many sections including interesting facts about the airline's history and the destinations they fly to. 
about an hour into the flight I couldn't see the cabin crew. After spending a few hours in the hot winter sun I got very thirsty so started wondering if a second drink service would begin. There were no signs of a second service so I did ask the crew for some more water which came very efficiently. During the stunning sunset I poked my head into the galley to explore the cabin a little and say hello to the crew. I asked if it would be possible to visit the flight deck after landing as I'm on this flight specifically for the A350. At first they did look a little bit confused, however the person did kindly go up and ask the captain, however this request was sadly rejected. I followed up by asking if I'd be able to have a look in the business class cabin for some photo opportunities which they sadly said no. I then asked if I could take a safety card home to add to my collection which they also said no to. British Airways and other airlines I've flown on are generally very happy with me taking cards home as a memento of my flight. Some crew even go that extra step and get fresh ones straight from the galley. And during all my interactions I generally got the feeling I was being a bit of a hindrance and they didn't really want to speak to me, which is a feeling I'm not really used to on other carriers. Now let's review <clears throat> The Throne. I'll be honest. It's not the most well-kept toilet. Um, there were stains over there. The tap is dirty. Uh, there's no soap. The bin is full. But I thought they would have. And this is where I feel Iberia has some room for improvement. Whilst the service was happening, it was really quick and efficient, however it generally fell on the short side and the crew seemed quite reluctant to make my experience memorable and add that personal touch that makes me want the flight to last longer. Now, some things such as flight deck visits and taking safety cards home, I can understand as sometimes airline policy can get in the way even if they wanted to. However, certain things such as photos of business class, I was a little bit confused as to why that was denied. And even if things are denied, I've been on other airlines where crew have tried to rectify the situation. Having said that, they were very friendly and professional at all times, so if you are watching, I'd still like to say a massive thank you for getting me home safely. So, should you fly Iberia? Uh, if I'm being honest, no. If they're cheapest, and the price is just right for you, or their timetable suits you perfectly, there is no reason to avoid the carrier. However, if you're looking for an enhanced experience that's going to leave you happy, I would possibly look into other carriers. Having said that, they do operate a large proportion of the traffic connecting Europe and South America, so if you have no choice but to fly them, their hard product is excellent and you'll be comfortable during the flight. Iberia also use a lot of their A330s and A350s between Heathrow and Madrid, so if you are a UK AV geek looking for a new aircraft to fly, I would definitely recommend the flight. However, of course, do be aware that equipment changes can happen. So, Iberia. A full written review of this flight can be found in the Visions Aviation LHR magazine, which is linked in the description below. Also in the description are links to Speedbird TV and the London Heathrow Spotters Group. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this honest but fair review of Iberia. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, sharing, liking and doing all the usual day. YouTube Thanks jazz. Cheers, thank you so much. Cheers, bye. Okay.